So maybe you think or even you know that your emails are now landing in the dreaded spam inbox. No matter your new subject lines, your new content you're launching, new initiatives, new flows, none of that matters if nobody can see your emails. Okay, but maybe you're saying, hey, yeah, I think I'm in spam, but how do I even begin to get out of this? In this video, I'm gonna walk through our go-to steps, super easy, what you can do with your business as well to first, get a pulse on where you are with your email deliverability. You know, are you, you know, are you in the trenches or is there some hope to climb back out? And then some strategies you can implement to help repair your domain if it is in bad standing. Small disclaimer though, these steps will not work if you have purchase lists, if you have obtain lists, um, if people have not authentically and organically subscribed to get messaging from your brand, Oh, there's no hope for you. <laughs> okay, maybe it's not that serious. There's probably hope for you, but these steps here are really just for brands that have their core subscriber list that are basically going to be the saviors to bring you back in to the inbox. Of course, email deliverability is not a, uh, you know, uh, once it's fixed, it's fixed and good to go. It's something that you should always keep tabs on. You should be checking it you know, in on the status and doing some cleaning, I mean, bi-weekly, monthly, uh, at least every three months, you know, setting some time in your marketing schedule when you're going through, you know, your business plans, you're looking to see how things are performing, list cleaning and ensuring your domain is in good standing should be top of the list. This example, I'm gonna run through actually one of our clients that we just wrapped this up with. So when we initially audited their account, uh, one of the first things I do is send myself some test messages, send myself some campaigns and see what happens with that inbox placement with a brand new subscriber. And of course it was going into spam. So these are the exact steps we followed with this particular client. We were able to get their uh, domain standing, which was basically at the bottom of Gmail standards up to the highest in like, I think exactly it's like three and a half weeks. So, which is uh, really, really good. And I promise you that is not always the case. That is actually kind of a really rare special one, but if you have a good subscriber list, it's possible, which is probably what you don't want to hear, but it can if you are in really bad standing and you've been in bad standing to get back up and back into pristine condition with your domain, it takes some work and some sacrifices for your campaign sends. So stay with me. Let's go through the steps and I'll show you exactly how to get it done. All right. So let's assume that we know our domain is going in the spam inbox. Something's funky. Something's not right. Engagement is dropping like something isn't adding up. First thing you wanna do is set up something called Google Postmasters. So this is a free tool from Gmail that basically allows you to have this little window, a very limited, limited little window into your domain reputation. And super easy to set up, free tool. You can just jump in at any time, get a pulse on your status, jump back out. I mean, it's, I mean, it's awesome. So getting started is super simple. So go ahead, click get started and it'll bring you into the back end. So after clicking getting started, we type in our domain. You are then going to get a TXT record. So this record is going to be added to wherever you host your domain. So, you know, if it's at GoDaddy, if it's in SiteGround, Cloudflare, wherever you host it, you're gonna go into what they call the DNS settings. So super easy to find, just go into like you're editing your domain and you'll see all these records. Don't touch those records, just add a new one and it'll be a TXT record. So just follow these steps here. It's a really, really easy one. Um, and once it's placed in, you'll do verify. And then once it's verified, it will pop up here as connected. Once connected, one thing to keep in mind is that it may take a bit for data to show up. So it kind of depends on the volume that you send. It also is possible that no data will appear. But if you're pretty regular with your sending, you have your main subscriber list, it's pretty healthy list. So, uh, I mean, I've been able to pull data on like a 700 subscriber list. So it is possible, just give it some time once you have that connection set, it may take a bit for some data to show up. So just keep checking in. All right, now that we have our domain verified, let's jump into the account. Okay, now that you're in, you will then see a drop down here where you can check spam rate, IP reputation, domain reputation, feedback loops, authentications, all that fun stuff. But the, I'd say the three main ones you should worry about are spam rate, IP reputation, and domain reputation. So let's jump into domain reputation because that'll be the main one you can control. 
All right, and when you're in, just drop out. I'm gonna drop this one out to 90 days just to have a reference. And this is the client that I was mentioning we came on board with and implemented this strategy to get their domain back into high standing. So uh, I think we came on like around like the end of January. So when we came in, we saw immediately, oh boy, we're in bad standing. So Gmail is basically saying, hey, yeah, your reputation, it sucks. Like we don't trust you. We don't trust the messages you're sending out. So they're probably going to be in spam. There really isn't specific clear data that Gmail is going to provide to you. Like I said, super limited window here. We're just seeing whether or not we're in bad, we're in low, we're in medium, or if we're in high status. That's all the information they're really giving us. And one thing to note, this is for Gmail, but it's, I mean, you're like looking at like a 95% chance that it's probably the same standing with other inbox providers. Okay, so once you're in, you now have this pulse and you're like, oh boy, yeah, I'm in bad standing. This isn't good. We need to make some changes immediately. If you're in something like low, I would still treat that as if you're in bad. It's almost like guaranteed over a matter of time, you're just going to drop down. So you have more of a fighting chance when you're here. You're in pretty good standing here, but things still, I mean, strategy wise, you want to be in high. You want the most you know, likely scenario that you will be in the inbox and being in high status will guarantee that. Well, not guarantee that, but give you the best odds. Okay, so now that you do see that you're in bad status, let's jump into the next step to show you how to fix that. So continuing with that client example that I mentioned that we just checked out in Postmasters. So when we came on board, we were taking a look at their recent sends. So here you can see 13%, 20%, 12%, not great. So that was also another sign that things were not too good, especially when they had just migrated to Klaviyo. So they had just migrated over and things just went wonky. So keep that in mind. If you're doing a migration, there needs to be almost like this warming period that needs to happen. And this kind of ties into your domain reputation repairing strategy as well. But um, just be careful with that because that can really affect your domain reputation if you just go hard, send into everybody on your list and not really segmenting. All right, so step two, this is the most important part of the step. This whole domain reputation repairing will not work if you do not bite the bullet with this step. And what I mean by that is that we're going to create a engaged segment. Not only that, we're going to create layers of engaged segments. For the next couple sins that you do, you want to only email your most engaged subscribers. So what does that mean? Let me show you in Klaviyo. Okay, so starting with our segments. So I like to build out tiers of engaged lists. So this is basically going to be who you'll be emailing to get your initial footing and to start making some repairs. So this is how I go in and build this initial list. I'll go in and list out all of the actions that someone could take to show that they are engaged in some way. So they were active on the site in the last 60 days. They clicked an email in the last 80 days. They placed an order in the last 60 days. Checkout was started in the last 60 days. Placed order Maybe they're a VIP or we could like classify that. So they placed an order more than three overall time. So they're super happy with you guys. Viewed product in the last 25 days, or even that they were just created, their brand new subscriber in the last 15 days. So you can get super strict with these. You could even tighten these down or you could expand it, but I would recommend starting out around these levels, do a few sends here, and then you can open it up. So this is why I call this engaged list tier one. Clone this segment and then create one that's more wide out. So in the last 80 days, in the last uh, 120 days. So build those tiers. And then once you see that you're getting your footing, you're seeing some repairs, jump on and start sending to tier two, into tier three. Also with your engaged list. So you have all these or actions. So someone did any of these to qualify for this list and they're not suppressed. It's just an extra check. You should have a core suppression list, which I'll show you next. Uh, but this should be in place. And they've opened emails more than three overall time. So you can get less strict with this if you want, but I like to be very strict with this. Okay, this person is getting our emails and they're opening them. So they are the most likely to open additional ones and we're already in their inbox. Ideally, hopefully, we've stayed in their inbox recently, but we want to just make sure they've been opening our emails. This piece can drop off over time. It can drop down to just like one. It could drop down to not even checking if someone's opened their email. 
but for reputation repairing, this is like that golden thing that has to be there to make sure you look the best for inbox providers when you start sending. So for reference with this client, when we put in this segment, we jumped from a 12% to a 44%. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, um, of course it jumped up. I mean, look at that. 15,000 people were opening, now 5,000, no, barely 6,000, right? I know it looks bad, but it is essential. What you're doing here is not necessarily trying to do what's best for uh, sales. Sales should be the last thing on your mind. It's all about looking good for inbox providers. So with Gmail, they're seeing that you sent to this list, you know, for this one, you know, we're looking at close to 11,000 contacts total almost half of them opened your emails gmail's like oh my gosh this is awesome yes okay i like this this person's doing something right they are sending content to their subscribers their subscribers like it they're clicking they're engaging this is key you're just training inbox providers to like you again that's the most important thing of course you're losing out on emailing maybe some possible sales at that time but what is most important is just looking good for inbox providers. So then at this point, um, we're kind of continuing. So we are doing basically uh, an email a week, if not two a week at this point. So, I mean, 49%, 53%, 57%, 60%, 61%, 64%. So keep that in mind. Um, when you see these numbers, just because it jumps up does not mean you are doing well yet. So keep sending, keep establishing. You don't want to just turn the faucet back on and start emailing everybody just because you're starting to get that 61% open rate. So this would be that point where you go back into Postmaster Tools and see if you got some movement. So let's go back in, let's reference some dates and see when we started to see some movement for this client. Okay, so looking at our sending, we started sending around like the 13th of January. So sending at least one email a week, you know, okay, we're in bad status, we're into January now. So checking back in, like I said, check once a week just to see where things are. Also one big thing to note, Postmasters is a lagging tool. So you may be actually in a, a better standing earlier, but Postmasters is gonna show you that it happened February 1st, but it might've actually started happening like January 22nd as an example. So we get into low status. Do not let up. Even though we're in low status, let's keep sending to that hyper engaged segment. We want to keep on with it because we could easily go to low and then drop right back down. That happens all the time. Sometimes if you have a very, um, you know, your domain reputation has been in bad for a while Gmail really just isn't liking it. You could hop up and down between low and bad for a while. So with this client, we got really lucky. Their list really loves their content, really loves their emails. So in just uh, you know a week or so, we were up into low status. So keeping with our engaged segment, our tier one, super focused, engaged segment, sending to them a few days later, up into medium. So things are looking good, but I really wanna make sure our client is in high status, the best possible. So we kept with this segment, kept going, and by February 18th, so I mean literally a month, just a month, sacrifice a month and send to your hyper engaged segment. And we were able to get their domain up into high status. So at this point, you know, be careful. Easily you could open up, you know, your a segment and jump back down to medium. But at least now you'll see the drop off happening and you could correct it immediately or as close as you can to immediately. So when we got to this point, we opened it up. So with our list uh, for this client, I mean, we opened it up to like, you know, pretty much anyone who's done any of those engaged action items, doesn't matter if they've opened an email recently or not. And so far, it's just kept with that high status. So once you're there, you'll start to see even your open rates to those larger lists start getting higher because of course, now you're in the inbox with them as well. And of course, I don't want to simplify it. It isn't just sending to that one engaged list and things will skyrocket. It's all about tweaking it. If you're sending to that engaged list and nothing's really moving there, you got to look deeper. Like, do you need to get even more strict with that segment? Or is your list just like not good? Did something go wrong? Did, like I mentioned before, hopefully you didn't purchase a list because there's really not a lot you can do to repair that, 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 list, you know, did not opt in to receive messages from you, 
they are not really going to want to open. They're not going to want to click. But if you keep with it, I mean, follow these simple, simple steps just to make sure you're sending to that engaged segment and you'll be all set. Also to mention, there are, of course, other elements that go into spam placement, but I am mostly focusing on the repair aspect of it. But you want to make sure you have alt text on all of your images. You want to make sure you have a good image to text ratio, meaning all of your text shouldn't be inside your images. It should be actual text inside of the email. Um, of course, making sure it's emails and content your subscribers want. You want to send them things that they are actually most engaged with. So look through your prior history. What did get the most engagement? Even though you think you might have been in spam, like what, you know, what did they want to see? What did they most click? What did they most open? What were those subject lines? So put yourself in the best standing to get those opens as well with the actual content within the email. And that is it. Those are the exact steps we follow with all of our clients to ensure their domain is in good standing. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.